What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min from Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for using Lumia styles. Let's get started. So what is Lumia styles? Lumia styles is a way to add effects to your model to create a perfect render. To use styles, first go to the photo or movie feature, then this window will open. Now I'm going to adjust my field of view using this slider here. I can also double click and type in a specific number that I want. Then I will click here to save the current view. And this is where you can add styles. Here you can see that the custom style is selected. If you click on it, you will see that Lumion has provided lots of presets for you to try, such as realistic, interior, daytime, color sketch, etc. You can try any of these for your render. But in this video, I'm going to create my own custom style preset. Now I will click here to start adding effects. There are different categories of effects, such as light and shadow, camera, scene and animation, weather and climate, sketch, colors, etc. For me, light and shadow is the most important category of effects, so I will focus on it in this video. Now I can click on the first effect that I want to add. I will start with the sun effect. This effect is quite simple, it is a way to adjust sun lighting for your render. It includes the sun height, sun heading or rotation, brightness, and disk size, which determines the size of the sun itself. For this render, I will adjust it so that the sun shines through the doors like so. And here's the before and after. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to click here and add the next effect, which is shadow. This effect is used to adjust all aspects of shadows in your scene. Let's start with the sun shadow range. As you can see here, a smaller sun shadow range gives me more detailed shadows. So since this is a small scene, I'll keep the slider all the way to the left. Next is coloring. The light in the shadows comes from the sky, which has a bluish tint. So the higher the coloring value, the more blue the shadow will look. You can also multiply this blue tint effect by setting this interior and exterior slider here to max. If you want to remove the blue tint, then set it to zero. Next is the brightness slider. This will determine how dark or light your shadows are. In this case, I want some dark shadows, so I will set it around here. Omni shadows is a great way to enhance small details in the geometry and materials. I usually set this to max. This is similar to adding ambient occlusion to your render. Shadow error correction allows you to reduce shadow errors caused by two pieces of the model being very close together. This is not very noticeable and it also depends on the scene. For example, for this other scene, it is better to leave it at zero. Next is shadow type, which includes normal, sharp, and ultra sharp. I will use a different example for this. Here is a comparison between normal, sharp, and ultra sharp shadows. Finally, the last two options are soft shadows and fine detail shadows. Fine detail shadows let you add more details to your shadows. You can see that this option added so much more details in the grass, which makes it a lot more realistic. You can also turn on soft shadows, but note that this is only available for shadow type normal. And here you can see that the soft shadow blurs out your shadows a bit more. Now let's get back to our main model and compare our renders with and without the shadow effect. As you can see, using this correctly can differentiate a good render from a bad one. Let's move on to the next effect, which is reflection. First, I will turn on speed ray reflections. Then I will click here and add reflection planes. Reflection planes simulate accurate mirror-like reflections no matter where the camera viewpoint is. The drawback with adding reflection planes is the increase in computer processing and rendering time. Note that you can also change the preview quality here. As you can see, with the reflection effect, our reflections in the windows look way more realistic. As for this interior render, I can add a reflection plane here. Since this is not reflective, the change is very subtle, but it still makes it look better. Next, I'm going to add a skylight effect. As you can see, this effect is not visible on the preview, so you will need to render it to see the effects. Brightness at zero will give a warmer render, while maximum brightness will produce a cooler tone. 
the saturation slider will make the render look more saturated. As for the skylight in projected and planar reflections, I will use this example to show you what it looks like with this option off versus when they are turned on. For this render, I will turn down the saturation brightness and turn on these two options here. Now let's add a hyperlight effect. Turning up this effect will increase the number of calculated light bounces in the scene and will help brighten up the interior more. But it will lose some shadows if it's set too high, so I will reduce the hyperlight to 25. Next, I will add another effect. I will use the sky and clouds effect to add some clouds to the background of my render. For this, it depends on your scene, so just experiment with the settings and see what works best for you. That looks pretty good. Let's add another effect. I will add the color correction effect. If you use post-production software such as Photoshop, then you should be familiar with these settings. Just experiment with them to find a style that fits your render. That looks pretty good to me. Next, I will add the analog camera effect. This is great for stylizing your render. There are lots of presets that you can use. I will use this one. This effect can change your render quite drastically, so just reduce the amount if you like. Finally, I will add a bloom effect like so. Before I show you another effect, I'm going to create another view. When creating a new view, instead of adding styles from scratch, I can go back to the previous view and click here, edit, then copy effects, and go to the new view, click menu, edit, and paste the effects here. There we go. This makes it a lot faster. Now I can add more effects such as the depth of field effect. For this, I can manually adjust the focus distance here. Or I can click on this pencil and pick a point where I want the camera to focus on. Then turn on autofocus. Pretty easy, huh? If you want to save your custom style for later, you can click here and save the effects to your computer. Then later, you can easily load it in. I will leave a link to download this style below in case any of you want to use it for your render. And that's how you can use styles to improve your render in Lumion. That's all for today guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment below if you have any questions. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.